My name is Mariah C. Kaminsky. I was gonna say the list. I'm a writer and performer and teacher and director, but, uh, but yeah, mostly I make theater. <laughs> I don't wanna sound sacrilegious. I don't worship the theater, but I do think it is my church. I think there's actually something really powerful and magical about people sitting in a room together. There's a communion that happens between an audience and performers that you can't can't get on film. You can't get over the radio. It happens. And you know, in this digital age where we're all on computers and behind cameras or what have you. <laughs> uh, I think it's becoming more and more rare. I think it's becoming more and more a commodity to have people actually be in a room and breathing together. Indescribably sad. I hope that before Theater Bites the Dust, all of us, you guys and me, will sit in a room very much like this one and just tremble with something so vicious and so true that we will wake up starving for one another's company and insatiable for something very live and, in a, and, and unabashedly living. I really hope that's going to be in Seattle. And I really hope it's going to be soon. Thank you so much for coming here tonight. I grew up in upstate New York with um, a menagerie of cats and dogs and two younger brothers. I lived in a really rural area uh, and it was like my brothers and I had to find ways to entertain ourselves in the woods. So I think that made us both interesting and kind of strange people. <laughs>
I have written a number of solo shows. Yeah, I love doing solo work. Um, I mean, I love playing with people too. I love collaborating. I love ensemble, but there is something so holy and irreverent about being alone on stage and directly addressing an audience. What is your relationship status? Mary? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Uh, single? Single, single, single. <laughs> what best describes your daily diet? <laughs> Do cigarettes and beer count as a diet? <laughs> Do you smoke? No. <laughs> passionate, enlightened, demanding artists. I love my work. What is your current annual income? <laughs> <laughs> it's been interesting writing and creating that many solo shows and then coming to a work like this, um, which is profoundly not mine. This play is based on the writings of Rachel Corey, uh, who was a 23-year-old activist slash writer slash dreamer slash daughter um, who went to the Gaza Strip uh, in early 2003, uh, went to Rafah um, to participate in, uh, in protests there, nonviolent protests against the Israeli occupation, and, and most specifically, the Israeli destruction of civilian homes there. February 7th. I have been in Palestine for two weeks and one hour now, and I still have very few words to describe what I see. She was killed by an, uh, an Israeli bulldozer in Rafa, um, and the play is about how this young girl from Olympia, Washington, you know, from the Pacific Northwest, who loves words and loves trees and loves boys and has this like wide open heart, how this girl makes it to the Middle East and um, how that changes her. If I lived in Bosnia or Rwanda or who knows where else, needless death would not be a distant symbol for me. It would not be a metaphor. It would be a reality. And I have no right to this metaphor, but I use it to console myself, to give a, a fraction of meaning to something enormous and needless. This realization, this realization that I will live my life in this world where I have privileges. I can't cool boiling waters in Russia. I can't be Picasso. I can't be Jesus. I can't save the planet single-handedly. I can wash dishes. People are killed every day in Palestine, but something about this one girl from Olympia um, has really turned our attention towards that part of the world, which is a powerful thing. I think, you know, all tragedy Aside, I think Rachel would be very happy about that. I have bad nightmares about tanks and bulldozers outside our house and you and me inside. Sometimes the adrenaline can act like an anesthetic for weeks, and then at night it just hits me again. A little of the reality of the situation. I am really scared for the people here. I think acting firstly is about fear. I think that plays are written about people who are, who are facing fear and who need to conjure bravery. And I think that an actor requires those qualities to be successful um, and to be honest. Um, authenticity, be 
being willing to be naked 